I think the, the, the best performances, the ones I'm most proud of, are the ones where in order to play them, I have to learn something about myself or grow in some way. And so the process of watching the performance is also the process of watching somebody change. Hi, my name is Maggie Gyllenhaal, and this is the timeline of my career. <laughs> Mr. Scott, keeper of my destiny. And where were we last Tuesday? School council meeting. Yeah. I had this history test. Is that I, what we talked last time this... about how leadership brings responsibility? I know that Waterland and actually A Dangerous Woman also are my first um, IMDb credits, which, I, I mean, it's true I'm in those movies, but um, my dad directed Waterland and my parents made A Dangerous Woman together. I have like one line in both of those movies, which was just an excuse really to go and visit my dad. It was funny actually, like I was 14, I felt like an actress. So it felt kind of weird to be like doing this line in my dad's movie. Although really nice to hang out with Ethan Hawke, who this is, I mean, like 90s. And Ethan Hawke was like, there was nobody cooler and sexier to me at the time. And he like hung out with me all day. Donnie, you're such a dick. <laughs> Whoa, Elizabeth, a little hostile there. I had graduated from college. Um, I had gone to Berkeley to do a play. It was one of the first real gigs I got. I had done like teeny parts in a couple of independent movies. And then I moved to LA, like to try to get some work. And I was doing a lot of auditioning and my brother was doing Donnie Darko and I went and auditioned for it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go play a little part in the movie that my brother was starring in, but I did it. It was really cool. To play brother and sister came really easily. There were a lot of feelings that, um, come along with that and they're all in the movie. And Jake's so great in that movie. It's one of my favorite movies of his, I think. So it was nice to be a part of it and support him. Are you listening? You will never, ever cut yourself again. I, I didn't really have the space or the knowledge, the craft to, to express the things that were really important and going on in my mind until Secretary. And when I read Secretary, I thought, I don't know why, but I have to do this movie. I went in and auditioned for Steve Shainberg, the director, and we just like really understood each other. And it was so clear in the room. And then I was like, then I just heard like, well, they're gonna offer to a bunch of movie stars first and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so we just hung out and, you know, I just waited and waited and checked in all the time. And I knew I could do something really that was like me with it. And finally it came to me. There's a scene, the first scene where Mr. Gray spanks Lee and um, it was really complicated politically, really interesting, really strange, tons of feelings, uh, hard to keep track of all of that. But what would happen was he sort of would fall over me and every time he would put his hand next to mine on the desk and I would take my pinky and like cover his pinky with it. It would happen every time I would do that. And I, it occurred to me at the time, I was like, oh, well that's consent. And I remember wanting to be sure that that was in the movie. Cause otherwise, I mean, you have to know that she's, that she wants it. So I didn't know who to tell. So I told James Spader, who told Steve Shainberg, the director who shot it and it's in the movie. And like, I'm very proud of that. He's making his move. I knew you'd go for her. She's too old for him. She's too smart for him. After secretary, everything changed. Yeah, I'd never been offered or had any access to bigger movies. But the, the bigness of that movie and that set and Julia Roberts and was so fun. I mean, like I was in New York, I was probably 22 shooting this movie, it's the fall. I loved Julia Roberts and she was just gave me tons of great advice. She bought me body scrub. <laughs> and she told me also about giving speeches. She was like, don't write every word down. Get the idea, think through what it is you wanna say. 
and then get up there and be there, um, which I do. Um, I've got two and a half years clean. I got clean in prison and I've been out for four days and I feel like using so bad. Actually, Sherry Baby, I probably did more research than anything. I mean, that was a world I didn't know all that much about. Um, yeah, I went to women's prisons. I went to a lot of halfway houses. I spent a long time researching that. And in a way, that was my rehearsal. I found it was more helpful to just go hang out in these places and see what everybody was wearing and how they were talking and um, meet people and find compassion, you know, for people who were living really differently than me. And it was the first time in my life that I'd come across a situation where I didn't um, fundamentally agree with the director I was working with, who was a brilliant, bright, exciting, inspiring woman. It took us about a week to get on the same page. And we only had five weeks to shoot it. And I ended up actually using the conflict with my wonderful, lovely, very pregnant director to fuel basically Sherry's conflict with the world. And she was wise enough, and you know, she's twice my age at the time, to know how helpful that was to me. Well, you look nervous. Is it the scars? You want to know how I got him? Come here. I had just had a baby when I heard about the Dark Knight. Um, I, I think Ramona at the time was like six weeks old. And you're almost on another planet, at least I was. I heard Chris Nolan wants to meet me, and I just was like, <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I went and met him. I was like, m all milky and feeling very honest, you know, you just like have a baby, things, especially just afterward, you know, is like priorities are all different. We had a great conversation and he basically said, I'd love for you to do this. Your character is going to die. So it's just this. And he gave me the script to read and I had, you know, a day to read it. And someone was sitting outside my house in a car waiting for me to give it back to them. Everybody in my world, like my agents, my manager, you know, everybody was like, so you're doing this movie. You know, I was like, okay, yeah, I think I should. Yes, I will. I'm very, yes, you know. I was I was afraid, though, on that scale. I have to be, I'll be honest, you know, I, I wasn't afraid in Secretary to say what I thought. I wasn't afraid in Sherry Baby. I was a little afraid on The Dark Knight to, um, to really express all of my ideas. It was big, and I was young. Well, that was the first time I was ever in anything on that scale. Trying to find space for myself inside it, it was interesting. On The Dark Knight, everyone was an expert. Christian Bale and Heath um, and Aaron Eckhart. And, and, and I had a little tiny baby. So it was kind of an interesting combination of something very, very tiny, very, very vulnerable and small in my life taking a lot of my attention and then something so massive and so kind of muscular and robust and big and um, kind of both in my mind at once. Tape recorder okay? Go ahead and have fun. You always dress for dinner? So Crazy Heart, I knew that we had to create real love. Otherwise that movie doesn't work because that movie is a tragic love story. You have to be absolutely heartbroken that they can't be together. And yet, of course they can't be together. But in order to create that in terms of story, they just have to love each other so much, like against all odds. I was really shy to talk to Jeff Bridges. He kept calling me and calling me. And I was, yeah, on the press tour for The Dark Knight. I really wanted to talk to him, but I was, I, I was shy. And finally I called him back. He's so nice. Um, we chat for a minute, it's like a little awkward. And then I didn't meet him until I was actually in Santa Fe. And he just comes walking across this parking lot and just sort of like grabs me and embraces me. And I was like, oh, he thinks the same thing I think. Our characters have, we have to create love. He just kind of knocked down every boundary, like let's go. We have no time 
we made that movie in 23 days also. The director and Jeff and me and the DP and we were all like high off of how much fun we were having. I did a lot of thinking about going to the Academy Awards. I thought, I want to have fun. I know I won't win. I have no investment in winning. I'm not, I wouldn't know what to do. You know, at the time I just felt like this is just enough, you know? And I was like, how can I be there? Enjoy it, like not let it just slip by. Because it is something I watched on TV as a kid and dreamed about and, and I did. I was able to be there. It was my husband's birthday and we went and, you know, like I said, we were all, all of us on that movie were in love. So like to be there together, Jeff won. Um, I loved my dress. Um, a couple friends met me afterward and I had a great time. I danced with Madonna at the after party. <laughs> it was like, it was great. You know, there are moments in a diplomat's career, Daniel, when the only thing to do is just to tell it straight. We have absolutely no knowledge of the mm, group. Is it also operating? your policy to allow military veterans into universities at the expense of Israeli Arabs? We have absolutely no... Would no you fucking shut up! TV wasn't quite what it is now, and I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to go to TV, and I open up the the script and start reading it and my manager who's also just a dear friend of mine and really smart woman who I who I really trust she was reading it at the same time and we both had very little babies so we were like you know dealing with kids and reading when we could and we were texting each other like this is really good wait did you read episode three shit you know whoa what are we oh. and then I finished it and I was like I can't do this I can't do this it takes place like in Gaza and and, and London, and I have a 14-month-old and a seven-year-old, and I can't do it. And Courtney, my manager, was like, I mean, she tells me now in retrospect, she was like, I was not gonna let you not do this. So anyway, I said yes, and I took my whole family to London and then to Morocco. And I feel like that project for me was a real turning point. I feel like that was real grown-up work. And I actually don't think I've ever been the same since then. I think it really changed something in me. I found it really hard to let go of it at the end. I, I really learned so much from that part. Your friend left. Yeah. Yeah, he was nice. Have a drink with me, Candy. I've never worked on anything this long, but to see the way everyone, all the actors, the writers, even our DP who shot the last two seasons with us, everyone's work has deepened. I mean, the third season is by far the best season. There's no question about it. I've seen all eight episodes. I was there, well, you know, making it. It's like, I think it's kind of leagues beyond the first two. I don't know why, except that, of course, we know each other so well. We trust each other. I'm more proud right now of my work in the third season of The Deuce than in anything I've done before. It's just pushed me to the edge of what I'm able to do, I think. Two falls ago, when people were, actresses were sort of getting together um, at people's houses, this is before me too and time's up it was sort of like the beginning of all that and just talking someone i i think it was natalie portman maybe said every time there's a fight scene if someone even grabs your arm there's a stunt coordinator there to make sure you're okay why isn't there somebody like that for sex scenes so season two we had an intimacy coordinator basically her job was to call the actors beforehand talk to them about what they were going to be doing introduce herself let them know that she was there to advocate for them. And so I think we we're the first. I think we started it, as far as I know. Basically what happens on every set is you sign a nudity waiver, which means you agree to show certain parts of your body. The reason why they do that is so that they then don't have actors coming to set when so much money is being spent each day uh, saying, oh, actually I've changed my mind. And then all of a sudden the scene can't be shot. But on our set, if you've signed a nudity waiver and then you change your mind, you changed your mind. It's like actual consent. If you go out to dinner with someone and you think, yeah, I want to go to bed with him. And then you go back to his apartment and you're like, actually, no. Well, then actually, no. And it's the same on our set. Hey, Jimmy. Hi. Hi. Turn that. Push it to the 
the left. The kindergarten teacher, I went to a Christmas party, like a work party, and a couple people came up to me and said, oh, have you read The Kindergarten Teacher? It's a great script and it's gonna come to you. And it's rare to hear that. It's rare to hear there's a great script, keep your eye out for, for more than one person. And so I was like, oh, cool, what's this, you know? And I, I waited for it, I didn't get it, I waited, I started to ask about it. Finally, I got it. I read it in one sitting, and I was like, I want this movie. And I just didn't hear back from anybody for like a couple days. I was like, I want this movie, <laughs> you know? And finally, yeah, they, they called me back and we decided to work on it together. And um, it was really hard to put together. It doesn't fit into a clear genre. Uh, it doesn't have anything that's like, I think, initially commercial about it. So to get the money for it was difficult and it took us a long time. Also, it was all women. Our director and our producer both got pregnant in this time that we were in pre-production trying to put the movie together and it pushed us back by a year. And then we shot it in 22 days for not enough money. I mean, I love it. I'm so proud of it. I think it says really interesting things about a feminine experience. And it's, I think it's rare to see that. I'm gonna direct an adaptation of Elena Ferrante's book, The Lost Daughter, um, which, uh, which I adapted, and we're gonna shoot next summer. I'm in the process now of putting the movie together. It really stars three women, and two of them I found already. So right now I'm, I'm really grateful for that time, and I just, I find the space uh, has been really interesting. I, I feel really curious about what it's gonna feel, feel like to actually be there shooting it. Um, but even this process now of, of the beginnings of pre-production are has <laughs> been really amazing. I've always been interested in storytelling. I, I feel like my acting has always included storytelling, but I think I didn't really feel entitled to explore storytelling from a directorial point of view. When I actually gave myself the space to think about what I really wanted, I thought, no, actually, I think I would like to direct. I also loved doing the book adaptation um, and writing. I don't know where I'm gonna be 10 years from now. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs>